Now we're moving on to the first match of one, episode 118. This match, the debut of Davari in MLW taking on Zenshi. So Davari making his debut. And I mean, we mentioned this before, man, this guy looks like a star. This guy is shredded and he looks like he's ready to murder anybody in his path. Absolutely. And do you, are you familiar with Davari before? I mean, I, I never knew him as an independent wrestler, but I remember when we had that run in the WWE, uh, so I'm going to estimate somewhere around 20, 2008 or 2010 or something like that as the uh, manager for that Muhammad Hassan. Do you remember this little run, Munson, where they had uh, Muhammad Hassan was kind of a terrorist type character, but he wasn't really a terrorist. He just everyone thought he was, and that's what he was angry about. Like that's kind of what his gimmick was. It was they, they, he was given a big push at the time, and I always thought Davari as his uh, manager was the smaller guy, but he was also good in the ring, and he was one of those managers that you, you could see was a good wrestler too, could take bumps and all that stuff. So uh, I always wondered, and I had heard that after Hassan left the business, that Davari was still active as a wrestler. I think he might be a Detroit boy or something like that. Anyway, he was hitting the indies hard and uh, working on his skills and everything. And then as we can see now, he's been working on his bodybuilding a whole hell of a lot too and just looking great. And this has got to be a big opportunity for uh, Davari to land in a, in a growing company like MLW and, and – uh, getting a good spot as a member of Contra too. Like that's got to make a big difference to a guy. And uh, you can see by his debut match, he's going to make the most of that opportunity. Oh yeah, man. And you know what? First of all, I do very, very well remember that uh, particular run with uh, Muhammad Hassan. I remember when they came in together and I thought right away, I mean, I knew where the WWE was going with the thought behind it all. And I thought, Hey, you know what? It works. The timing's right for an angle like this. And it was a shame that for Muhammad Hassan, that came to such an early close due to uh, politics with some of the sponsors and stuff at the time, from what I understand from different uh, guys in the business who have talked about it on various podcasts and everything. But then Davari got a chance to get in the ring, and I thought there was a lot of potential with him. Uh, that whole run that he had with the WWE, I thought that uh, there was a lot there, and I heard, same as you, I had heard about his work on the indies, but I had not actually seen it. And then when he came back, looking like absolute gold when he came back to MLW here. And I do know that uh, his, I think it's his brother, Aria Davari or something, had to go with the WWE in the Cruiserweight Classic. Again, it seems like that whole family is just, they're, they're really good ring workers. They're good on a microphone. And I think they know how to work a crowd. They know how to play heels extremely well. And I think... This is great. Sean DeMurray in MLW, great addition to their lineup. And, man, this match looked awesome. Yeah, I think so, too. Uh, uh, a great addition. And then uh, watching Davari in the ring, he's quite good. He's got a – he's got a – what I refer to now as a retro-style kind of thing. He, he, uh, he doesn't hurry. He's not, he's not moving a million miles an hour. He's not doing a million different moves and – trying to get all his shit in all the time. He, The first five minutes of this match were nice. He took Zenshi down in some wrestling maneuvers. He worked on the arm for the first five minutes or so. Uh, they had a nice little wrestling match there with some uh, some good strikes, some good holds and everything. What did you think of the right towards the very end of the match, Munson, Zenshi hit that nice move? Uh, we were talking earlier about... Uh, Leo Rush and, and how he had uh, kind of uh, tweaked his offense to work more for the guy of the smaller stature or whatever. And since he had that move where he did a 450 splash, but from the bottom rope. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. fucking wild. Wow. Yeah. That's some athleticism right there. It's got hard enough to get those rotations in from the top rope. This guy's doing it off the bottom rope. Yeah. That was really quite impressive. And I remember making in my notes when Zenshi, we first saw him over in MLW, was when he took on Kelvin Tankman a few weeks back. And I'm thinking, poor yeah. Zenshi at this time. And then he gives us this match with Davari, which I found 
thoroughly entertaining. And like you were saying about Davari grounding Zenshi and using those holds, a great way of doing things because Zenshi, the smaller guy, the high flyer, known for his lucha work and stuff like that. Uh, so again, Davari using that kind of mentality and that technique to keep Zenshi grounded was fantastic. And then when Zenshi got to release and do a move like that, he didn't need to do... 50 of them in a 30-minute match on television for free. He did it once. He made it count. It looked fucking great. And we ended up with a great match and a great win in the end for Davari as well, too. For sure. I, I like the way it worked that month. And I think that match was just set out nicely, too, that yet not everybody has to do all their shit in each match, you know, 100 miles an hour. And this, this was a good match to put Davari over because he had – a pretty decent, uh, skilled opponent, and he had to use a strategy in order to not get caught by this high flyers offense and stuff. It worked. He grounded him with holds and stuff like that. And still, Zenchi got a couple of his moves off, one of them being that bottom rope 450 splash. And look, he caught the attention of the of the old time wrestling fans here, Munson and Papa Smokes, like with that one move, like I, I'm kind of a fan of Zenshi now. That was really cool and it looked awesome. And it got him over a little bit, even in that losing effort. Yeah, and I know, again, many people could probably listen to this right now and they could turn around, oh, well, this guy and this guy and this guy do this in Japan on a weekly basis and they do it 17 times a matchup and... I get it. There's guys that are very athletic who do these kind of things, but it's more you got to understand the psychology behind it because, again, I'm not knocking Japan wrestling. Don't let's not go down that fucking rabbit hole right now either. I do watch. I do watch some New Japan Pro Wrestling and do enjoy a lot of it as well too. So we're not going down that rabbit hole. Anybody listening, uh, what I'm trying to make a point at is when you get these matches that do. That kind of a move that Zenshi did with the 450 splash, but then it's followed up by another move that's athletic and another athletic high flying move where it happens over and over again to the point where it feels choreographed instead of feeling like a matchup between two guys who want to win. That's my problem with it. When it gets overdone, it gets annoying, it gets frustrating, and it loses its aura. When Zenshi did it here, it made sense. I loved it. I popped for it. Well done, Zenshi. You made a fan out of me on that one for sure. Yeah, and exactly. And Zenshi, look what you did. You did your job. You did the thing you were supposed to do. You're supposed to get help get the new guy over. You did that, but you also put yourself over just a little bit, just enough to uh, to make some people notice you in a losing effort. It's 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 a win win situation all around. And again, I, I love the booking that goes on in NLW and. Uh, I'm not sure if they have an agent for their matches. I'm sure somebody helps them go over finishes and stuff, but whoever's doing that is doing a real good job too. And uh, hats off again to MLW, putting out some uh, quality product that makes sense to the viewer. 